I'm fine. I'm fine. It's just that you're so... You're so... Big. Imagine living life on a grander scale. Imagine tasting water when it's brand new. Or being one with nature without going it alone. Back in 1999, Ford released a new SUV, the Excursion, that would, after over 60 years, finally dethrone the Chevy Suburban as the largest SUV available for public sale. Based on the Ford F-250 Super Duty pickup, the Excursion had its own unique ladder frame and other family-friendly features like second and third row entertainment screens to make it feel less like driving a truck. However, despite Ford making similarly sized full-size vans and pickups, Public backlash for the excursion size and image of excess often made owners shunned and ridiculed. The resulting negative PR hit forced Ford to discontinue the excursion after only six model years. But since then, it has gained a cult following, thanks to it still being the biggest SUV on the used market. This is the story of the Ford Excursion. This is my old car. You broke my glasses! I'm sorry! Take my raven! As I write this episode in 2024, you can buy a new Chevy Suburban that is 226 inches long, 76 inches tall, 81 inches wide, and has fuel economy as low as 15 miles to the gallon. There is no denying that it is huge, and a gas guzzler, yet in 2024, few seem to care, as the Suburban, along with their platform mates, the GMC Yukon XL and Cadillac Escalade ESV, are some of the most profitable vehicles GM sells. Or you could get a Jeep Wagoneer L which is an inch longer and three inches wider than the Excursion was. And yet, 25 years ago, when Ford introduced the Excursion, with nearly identical dimensions as today's Suburban and Wagoneer L, the public and media response back then was far different, with many saying it was excessive and dangerous. And in the end, they helped kill the Excursion before it even had a chance. The outcry was even worse than the civilian version of the Hummer H1 that was released in 1992, most likely due to the H1 having far less sales volume due to its low practicality and very high price. Ford first entered the full-size four-door SUV market with the introduction of the Expedition in 1997. Replacing the full-size two-door Bronco, the Expedition was intended as a step up from the Explorer and catered to families who needed a third row but didn't want to be seen in a minivan. You girls really showed up, huh? You guys better pray for rain. The 1999 Expedition built Ford Tough. The Expedition shared its platform with the F-150 pickup and consequently shared several components, including shared dashboards. Soon after, Lincoln would offer its own version of the Expedition, called the Navigator. Both SUVs would become sales successes, so much so that Ford took this into consideration when planning the split of their F-Series Super Duty line from the F-150 to become its own dedicated platform in 1998. The Ford Super Duty line, launched in 1998 for the 1999 model year, would consist of the F-250 and 350 pickups, and the 350, 450, and 550 chassis cabs. Although they shared engine options with the F-150, the Super Duties had their own dedicated frames and body panels. Engine options were either a 5.4 liter gas V8, a 6.8 liter gas V10, or a 7.3 liter turbo diesel V8, the latter from Ford's joint venture with Navistar International. Pickup trucks were starting to become more popular for families and not just commercial use. And although the expected buyers of trucks in the Super Duty lineup lean more towards work trucks, Ford still offered a top-of-the-line Lariat trim with options like heated leather seats and in-dash CD changers. These improvements were also being considered in Ford's plan to adapt the Super Duty to an SUV platform. In keeping with the EX naming convention of the Explorer and Expedition, the Super Duty SUV would be called the Excursion. From the windshield forward, it shared the F-250's bodywork, but underneath, it was a unique frame to accommodate a body that would be taller and wider than the pickup. The 4x4 version of the Super Duty platform had a solid front axle that was basically the same as Ford trucks from 1965, so they were the worst option for ride quality. To compensate, the Excursion had new springs, dampers, and anti-roll bars not available in the pickup. An unintended side effect of this new chassis meant that the Excursion would effectively be like a monster truck in a crash, as it could roll up and over a smaller car in a collision. The result was the addition of what they called a blocker beam built into the front frame, which could deform and absorb a collision to prevent the truck from going up and over a smaller car's hood. The excursion also came standard with a trailer hitch, designed to double as a blocker beam for collisions in the rear. Despite being based on a three-quarter ton F-250 chassis, the excursion had a gross vehicle weight rating, or GVWR, between 8,600 and 8,900 pounds, depending on the engine and depending on being either two or four-wheel drive. 
This GVWR rating was conveniently just above the 8,500 pound limit imposed by the EPA for light duty vehicles, which made the excursion exempt from EPA fuel economy standards. It could also tow up to 11,000 pounds, and to ensure the cargo area could still be accessed when the trailer hitch was in use, the rear hatch consisted of three doors, two Dutch doors on the bottom half, and the glass portion could swing up independently of the doors below it. Yes, this looks a lot like a Chevy Astro van, so much so that I wouldn't be surprised if Ford stole the idea from the Astro. To make room for the excursion's 44-gallon fuel tank, the spare tire was repositioned to the left side of the cargo area. So although the spare tire took away some cargo space, the bigger tank was likely in the design to provide more range on long trips. Seating capacity was best in class, as you could opt for three bench sheets that could fit nine people. The third row had 39 inches of legroom. Yes, the third row making it more comfortable than many other cars and trucks had in their second row. The back of the third row bench could be folded down, or the entire bench could be removed. Similar to the Super Duty pickups, the Excursion offered base XL, mid-range XLT, and top-of-the-line limited trims. However, the Limited offered a feature not available in the pickup at the time, and that was an optional DVD entertainment system. Early on, these screens could be connected to a VCR, but by 2003, they were upgraded to DVD. This system offered two screens, one for the second row, and one for the third row, a rare option for any three-row vehicle back then. But in terms of interior trim, the Excursion Limited, and later the Eddie Bauer editions, would include fake wood accents that maybe didn't look so fake 20 years ago, but today, this probably wouldn't be tolerated in any car or truck. Upon its release in 1999 for the 2000 model year, the Excursion had no problem becoming quickly well-known, thanks to its claim of being the largest SUV available for public sale. In its first year, it met sales expectations with nearly 69,000 sold. However, the backlash from groups such as the Sierra Club soon followed, with some mocking the excursion by calling it the Ford Valdez, a nod to the doomed Exxon Valdez supertanker. All this, despite the full-size pickup in which the excursion was based, was a foot and a half longer, and the Super Duty Econoline van, the ones meant to hold up to 15 people, was six inches longer. Although the excursion was initially offered with a 7.3 liter turbo diesel, in 2003, Ford switched to a more powerful and more economical 6-liter turbo diesel. The 7.3-liter has proven to be the most reliable over time, and in turn has become the most popular on the used market. However, the 6-liter, which had the highest horsepower and torque of any excursion engine at 325 and 560, has proven to be just the opposite. Reliability got so bad that an outside company called Bulletproof Diesel came up with their own set of replacement parts to solve issues like failing oil coolers, cracked water coolers, degraded fuel injectors, and even cylinder bolt heads that could stretch and blow out the gasket seals. The V10 has been the next best option, and although it doesn't have the fuel economy of the 7.3 turbo diesel, it has 310 horsepower, which comes in handy for a truck that weighs over 7,000 pounds. In 2005, the Excursion had its first and only exterior refresh, a new 3-bar grille which coincided with the same change being done on the Super Duty pickups. This did little to help sales, which had dropped to only 20,000 for 2004, and 16,000 for 2005. The drop in sales encouraged Ford to plan for an extended length version of the Expedition, which would ultimately become the next best replacement for the Excursion when it was canceled in 2005. The longer Expedition, dubbed the EL in the US, or the MAX elsewhere, debuted in 2006 for the 2007 model year. Okay, suburban owners, today let's pick up those seats and lift and up and forward and stop. But this longer Expedition was never a true successor, as it wasn't as long, nor could it haul or tow as much as the Excursion ones could. Ford had little choice but to keep the Expedition EL from matching or surpassing what the Excursion ones had, otherwise it would defeat the purpose of its existence. Although in the end, maybe that was the better choice, as the recession of the late 2000s probably would have killed the Excursion for good anyway. Over its six-year run, nearly 200,000 Excursions were sold. That may sound like a good number, except when you consider that Ford nowadays can sell that many Explorers in just a single year. But nearly 200,000 means there are still a lot of used examples available. Thanks to Ford never providing a true successor to the Excursion, used trucks can often sell for $20,000, $30,000, or even $40,000. Not bad for a truck with 20 plus year old tech inside. The largest mass produced SUV ever made. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click the like button and subscribe to my channel. If you once owned a car from the 80s to mid 2000s that you rarely see today and would like it featured in a future episode, leave a reply in the comments or contact me at the email shown here. See you next time. With the third row folded up, this rig could fit eight full size Doug DeMuros perfectly without any complaints.